Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Today we're going to be looking at a different brand of multi knife. This one, I've heard it by several different names actually. I've heard it called Rike, I've heard it called Rake, I've heard it called Ruiki and Ruik. We're going to refer to it as Rake. And if I've gotten it wrong, if somebody is more proficient with the with the actual pronunciation of this name, just let me know. I'm sure I'm going to get comments either way. But nonetheless, we're going to call it Rake. Now, Rake is owned by Phoenix Light. And right off the start, first thing you need to know about this particular multi-knife is that the manufacturing origin is in China. So, especially in today's political climate, if that is something that... Uh, is a detractor for you i want to let you know that right up front so a couple of things that these now the, the model we're looking at today is called the l51 they actually have another knife that's called the l61 that has even one more layer than this one i decided to start off with one of the bigger layers of these knives just to get a better idea of the functionality that comes within them uh, so that we could test out you know various different implements that they provide with these with these knives so a couple of the key functions, first of all, uh, the, the steel on this is going to be a Sandvig uh, 12C27 blade. Uh, it's going to have a uh, Rockwell hardness between 58 and 59. So it's it's right in there with uh, what you're going to get with 420HC and, and 8CR13 MOV. So not a terrible blade steel, uh, but you know if, if you're looking for a little better blade steel, Probably multi knives and, uh, and multi tools are probably not what you're going to be searching for, unless you're going to get in some of the higher higher end Leathermans that include 154 CM or S30V, and in some cases uh, other multi tool companies that will go even higher than that. So uh, one thing I do like about this is that they integrate pocket clips with it, and they come with GTN handle scales. Now all of them that I'm aware of also include a tungsten glass break on them as well so let's uh let's go through the specs of this l51 this is a pretty chunky uh multi knife this is a five layer knife so the heft on this is is up there pretty good but let's run through the specs and then we'll start going through the tool set of the rake l51 okay so for the specs on this one i want you to keep in mind that this is a five layer knife so this one's going to be pretty chunky it's going to be one of their larger knives this one's going to come in at 242 grams or about eight and a half ounces so it, it's pretty hefty the overall length on this one is four and three eighths of an inch or about 111 millimeters the widest point on this knife is going to be an inch and a quarter wide or a right under 32 millimeters and because this is a five layer it's going to be pretty uh the depth on this is going to be uh pretty wide as well it's going to come at come in at one inch or 25.4 millimeters now let's go through the tool set of this. First of all, we talked about the integrated clip and the GTN handle scales. So the first tool that we have is the only one that's on the back side, and that is going to be a corkscrew. Now I brought in the Swiss Champ from Victorinox because I wanted to kind of show you some of the differences between these. And these are very similar corkscrews, uh, though I think that the one on this knife it has a little sharper point to it. And they, they operate in much the same way where they come out the, the backside and land in this 90 degree position. So coarse screws obviously are good for removing corks on wine, but they also have the double feature of being able to help untie uh, knots in smaller cordage as well. So as far as the back tools, that's the only one that they have. And then on the side, they have an integrated tungsten glass break. Now, as we go through these tools, a couple of these I haven't completely tried out yet, but we're going to try out, especially when it comes to the knife blades. The first one is this rope cutter that they have integrated. You'll notice it doesn't come out fully open. It stops at about uh, a 45 degree out position. So this one I haven't had a chance to try yet, but we're definitely going to give it a look. Now, next to that, they have a fold out lanyard loop on this one as well. So if you wanted to add a lanyard to this knife, you have the ability to do so. On the opposite side, this one is similar to what you're going to get in a Victorinox. And we're just going to bring that Swiss Champ in here again real quick. Here's a key difference, though, is that in the Swiss Champ, and keep in mind that the Swiss Champ would more closely be related to the medium size instead of the large size of Rake's uh, knife. So this one is a little bit bigger than what you're going to find with these 91 millimeters. So the first thing is, 
is that on the Victorinox, it's, it opens to the 90 degree position where in the rake, it does not. There's no stop there. I just have it uh, just resting in that position. So there's no stop here. It only opens in the fully open position where the Victorinox has a stop in the 90 and fully open. Now, much like the Victorinox knives, this one's gonna have the included wire stripper. But this particular knife has more than one wire stripper which gives it a little bit of an advantage over some of the Victorinox counterparts. Now the two holes that you see in here, those are for wire bending. So you'd be able to uh, set a wire in there. And it, this is for making loops in electrical uh, solid wire. So it gives you the ability to, to make a couple of different size loops uh, by integrating those holes in there. Now the next tool is the scissors. Now I brought in, this is, uh, the Evolution uh, Evil Grip 18 in yellow. Uh, now this is from the Delamont collection of Victorinox, which is basically uh, the old Wenger versions. Now the reason I brought this in is because both of these incorporate lock bars, but you'll notice that uh, this one is set up opposite of what the Wenger is. Now with the Wenger, uh, or with the Delamont collection, the Evil Grip, when you operate the scissors, they you can see how that bar moves because they're using a slip joint mechanism as opposed to a lock mechanism. This portion of the scissors is allowed to move. Wherein, let's pull the Swiss champ back in here real quick and get its scissors out. By utilizing a spring on the Victorinox scissors, the regular Victorinox scissors, they don't have that problem because uh, this is not being tension just the way the tension bar on these works allows those uh, one half of the scissors to to move freely like that but with this style with the spring you don't have that issue and so in some ways it can be better in some ways uh, it just it all really depends on on your personal taste but the victorinox scissors are, are some of the best scissors out there for multi knives and multi tools in general as far as that goes this one however works in the opposite direction you notice with that that evil grip that the scissors moved up every time you operate them. And that's something that I don't like about the Delamont collection, but because these scissors are flipped around the bottom moves with the tension bar, but the top stays, uh, stays in position. So they operate much like the Victorinox scissors do. So this is one thing that I do like about these scissors and, uh, I just haven't had a chance to try them yet, but we're going to do that here in a little bit. Now, in the same layer of this knife, they have their awl. Now, the awl on here is similar in styling to what you get on the Victorinox, but uh, I like the fact that this one is in line, and a lot of Victorinox knives are not in line. So it also includes a sewing eyelet. And here is our second wire stripper, and you can see that's a V-cut wire stripper that allows you to get a lot bigger gauge wire stripped with this particular implement. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you about this all that I learned the hard way is that it has a lot of return tension on it. So you'll notice when I get this to where it flips, it really kicks over there fast. And actually, that all actually nicked me because I wasn't aware of that to begin with. But now that I know, I make sure that I keep my fingers out of its path whenever closing it. Now, this little notch in here, that's an interesting tool. That's actually a bicycle spoke wrench and it fits perfectly. I've actually tried that, and that is an interesting tool to have on a knife like this. Um, just one of those things that they can or have the ability to add on, and so why not? So for, for people who, uh, who bike, that might be uh, a selling point actually for you. So let's uh, fold that all back up. We'll set that down, and we'll get the scissors set. The next tool is the saw blade now the saw blade on here is made incredibly incredibly well and much like the victorinox but uh, you know again this knife is larger than this knife so if we were in the medium series uh, they would probably be pretty well on par with one another they have a very similar styling to them as well uh, this particular saw looks incredibly good but i have yet to try it, and we're going to do that here in a little bit as well but the kerf is set or, or the the spine of the saw is is uh shallower or, or narrower than the front so when you're cutting through lumber it should cut through there just fine now the next tool is a little different 
Uh, this is their pliers. And I think that they call these fishing pliers is how they actually uh, set it up. Let me readjust my math there a little bit. So let's bring the Swiss Champ back in here real quick. And we'll take a look at its pliers. Now, apart from just size, uh, these are set up pretty similar, except this one uses a tension bar and this one uses a spring. Now, much like the problem that the, the scissors on the Delamont versions have, where that scissor will float, so is true of this plier. And that takes some getting used to. You'll notice that as we put tension on here, the back spring will kick out a little bit, allows movement on those pliers. So that's a little different, and it's a little harder to get accustomed to. Wherein with the Victorinox, that doesn't happen, but you can see that the return on them is not nearly as smooth as what it is on this knife. So one thing to keep in mind. Now, this is a tool that I haven't yet tried, uh, but I think that's going to work out all right. You just have to get accustomed to how it operates. Now, in that same layer, they provide you with a more of a two-dimensional or a flattened uh, number two Phillips. I like the fact that it's in line though, and for most light duty or medium task, uh, removing screws, number two screws, uh, I think that's going to work fine. And I, I actually prefer this over what you'll get. Well, the Swiss Champ doesn't have it on there, but uh, a lot of times you'll have a Phillips driver on the back side of, of some of your Victorinox knives. I actually prefer it in line like this, and I don't mind that it's, that it's not full dimensional uh, in a knife like this. So. It also has quite a bit of spring back when you close it up. And then the last tool, probably the one of the most important on this knife, is going to be the knife itself. Now, we're going to test this out, but the knife on here is a very good looking blade. Uh, I, I like this blade quite a little bit, and uh, I haven't done a cut test on it. I wanted to do that on video. So we're going to try out a couple of those cutting implements and see just how well they work. So for the knife blade, the first thing I have is just some scrap paper, and we'll give it a shot and see. Eh, it did okay. I mean, I'm doubled over. It's getting a little better. This blade could stand to be touched up a little bit, but you can see that it comes out of the factory fairly sharp. So it could use a slight touch-up, but as far as the blade coming out of the factory sharp, it actually comes out pretty well. So one of the things I want to try out is this blade, and I'm interested to see how well that works because it's not uh, fully opened in the in the 180 degree position so oh actually that works pretty good i tell you what because this is it's not set fully back it actually allows you to get a little bit more leverage in order to get through these this uh, smaller gauge rope here so this actually works really really well i'm kind of impressed with that with that uh, particular blade there that's a that's an interesting it's interesting how they put that on there but it actually works really really well now the next thing that i want to try out for you is the scissors to see how well they work how they operate and uh, on paper boy they they work quite smooth just like you would expect them to so let's go into that same rope that we were using and see if it's able to get through this stuff and they do quite good on that in fact to, as a control let's go ahead and bring out the victorinox scissors which are some of the best out there and see how well it gets through there. So I think the Victorinox scissor get through, gets through that just maybe slightly better, but the one on the rake is not bad. Oh, I, I, just as I say that, it, it, the scissors kind of uh, bound up there a little bit. Let me try it again. I actually have to step it off and cut it kind of twice uh, so that it doesn't bind up. But as far as the scissors capability, they are pretty well done. I'm, I'm going to still say that the Victorinox scissors are probably still king of the hill just by a little bit on that. But there is really nothing wrong with these scissors either. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So the last thing that I wanted to try out for you guys was the saw blade and it actually performed pretty well. Now, most of this was just user error on my part of, of, of retracting the saw blade out of the cut. But as far as how well it cut, it's pretty well on par with what Victorinox saw blades are. Uh, it did a really fantastic job getting through that wood. And though I slipped out of the cut a couple times, uh, that's really my fault and not the knife's fault as far as its cutting capability. I'd say it's right on par with Victorinox. So the last function that I'm curious to try out on here, and it's just because Victorinox doesn't offer this, or at least a larger version of it, and that's the larger wire stripper. So what I have here is some 14 gauge stranded. Now, normally I like to collapse a tool back on itself whenever doing stuff like this. So let's see if it'll collapse in there okay. It, it just allows you to get a little better purchase on the tool itself to, to uh, strip around, strip wire. Now this one is not, doesn't have the greatest ergonomics for doing it with that method. So let's just try it in the open position. We'll just, ah, we'll go ahead and finish cutting it right there where it was. We'll score it and then see if we can strip it off. And it seems to have done a pretty good job. So let me give that one more shot. Now the, the, the difficulty with this is that you don't always have the ability to twist the wire around the tool. So this is why I generally like to be able to have the ability to twist the tool around the wiring to get a little better cut. So it's not the easiest uh, wire stripper that I've used for sure. And I don't have a whole lot of wire here to, to grab hold of, but you can see that it scored through there all right. Uh, it's a little tedious, but the fact that it does have the ability to uh, do a little bit larger wire stripping, because this is something that you cannot do with the Victorinox without modification. You can see it just will not get in there. So there's one thing I do like about this, and I probably could go up one gauge higher to 12 gauge, and I think it would work maybe even a little bit better in this particular tool. So in conclusion, there's a lot to like about this knife above and beyond a, 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 a similarly uh, outfitted Victorinox knife. Now again, this is in the large version. I'll be interested to pick up one of their medium version knives to see how well it stacks up against the 91 millimeters of Victorinox. But on the whole, there's a lot of things about this that I actually like quite a bit. I think the advantages that a Victorinox might have over the, the additional scale tools, and by the way, there is one tool that I missed, and we're going to catch that right now. And this only has one scale tool in here, and it is a very, very large set of tweezers. And these things are actually pretty nice. Now, with Victorinox, you get a much smaller set of tweezers. They really kind of feel flimsy by comparison to the ones on this knife. And... I'm actually one curious as to whether or not I can buy this separately because this would make a great little, uh, to be able to put it into this pouch of my Leatherman Surge to have the ability to have tweezers on it. These tweezers are superior to those of the Victorinox in my opinion. Now, the downside to this and where the where Victorinox, especially with scale tools, or plus tool, uh, excuse me, plus scales is going to shine is the fact that they have a lot more scale tools, namely toothpick, the pin, the straight pin in particular is one that I really like on there. Now, a couple of things that I like about the rate, first of all, pocket clip, that's a big thing. Now, though I think this knife is pretty big to be trying to pocket carry, I would be interested in their two and three layer knives. I think that would be great to have a pocket clip on those knives. Um, the scissors actually work pretty well, though I still think the Victorinox scissors are probably just a little bit better than what they are on the rake, but these perform pretty admirably. The saw blade is pretty much the same thing. It performed really well. It's difficult to really tell if the Victorinox saw blades work just a touch better. Some of that, again, on my part was user error. So on the whole, I actually like this quite a little bit. The fact that they have a little glass break that's included. The knife blade is really sharp looking. And though it could stand a, just a touch, uh, just a slight touch up, uh, I was, I'm pretty impressed with that knife blade. I like the blade shape. Uh, just the ergonomics on this one are actually pretty good. Now, it'd be better in a, in a little smaller layered knife. But on the whole, I, I like this quite a little bit. So this is, a, is basically a, another option for if you're looking for something in a Victorinox style, Swiss Army knife style knife. 
This one actually has some really cool features such as, you know, like that bicycle spoke wrench that you don't get in other things. Number of things to like about this knife and at 55 to $60 is what this one runs for this L50, uh, L51. I actually like this quite a little bit and it's something that I think I'm going to recommend because just some of the extra functionality that you get with this really kind of goes above and beyond what even Victorinox offers. So if you get a chance and you want to check this out, I'll leave links down in the description box for this knife as well as some of their other models. And hopefully I'll be acquiring some more, especially in their medium and their small knives that I want to check out. My name is Ben. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crib. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.